Hello everybody, we're going to take a look at a very powerful area of Logbook Pro you may not be aware of. I'm sure a lot of you just spend your time in the logbook area or maybe generating report from time to time. But what happens when it's time to take a look at the analytics? How many hours have you flown? Do you need to know how many hours you flew in a particular aircraft uh, type or even down to the specific uh, tail number? One very powerful area of Logbook Pro that I highly recommend you all take a look at, just tinker around with, is called the Analyzer. You can access it either by clicking View, Analyzer, you can press F11, or you can click this button just to the right of the Logbook button on the toolbar. So let's take a look at the Analyzer, and I'm going to show you some of the advanced features, uh, particularly for airline pilots that are filling out applications and needing to get some complex time data. We're going to uh, run the analyzer and we're presented with the uh, date filters. Most of the time when you're running a report, a chart, or the analyzer, uh, unless you're trying to filter down between two dates such as this month, last month, which you can also use this little drop down uh, quick uh, picker, you want to choose the all data button in the bottom left. And this is going to give us a presentation of all of your aircraft types on the left. So you can scroll down, you can see all the aircraft types, and then you can see your time breakdowns in this yellow or highlighted area. So you can see um, C-172, there are 665 flights. And I'll just make a note that uh, <clears throat> the legs column in Logbook Pro is essentially your number of flights. In Logbook Pro with our free form route of flight entry input system, you can actually log an entire day in a one line entry. So you need to make sure you put in the number of legs, which will correspond to the number of flights. But you can see you can just go across each column here. Now this is called a pivot table in that these blue items can actually be dragged and dropped to different locations and we'll look at that here in just a minute. And This is going to be a very quick overview. I just want to get you into the analyzer, tinker around with it, and you can take it from here. You can, anywhere you see this plus sign means you can expand it and you can actually see uh, just some dummy end numbers from uh, test data here where you can actually expand the type and look at uh, your time, <clears throat> number of flights, hours, etc and you can scroll for even more data from you know the approaches you've flown in this particular type etc so you can look at it down to the end number so just clicking the plus sign gives you the information where you can get details now you can switch from uh, your time summary to an actual percentage of your total time so just by clicking the percent button you can see that um, in this particular end number is 0.02 percent but if we collapse it we can see that C-182 is 1.1 percent of our total flights or 0.71 percent of our total hours so you can look at percentages versus number values just by clicking these two buttons on the toolbar for uh, totals or summary data versus percents. Now if you want to filter information maybe you want to see information that um, a particular class, maybe you want to look at your multi-engine time. So you can turn off your glider, turn off gyroplane helicopter, turn off everything except for your multi-engine helo and land. Maybe you just want to see multi-engine land. Once you collapse this drop down, it's going to instantly filter your data to multi-engine land. Now this is information as set in the options aircraft area. Each aircraft type has a configuration such as airplane single engine land, multi engine land, etc. So let's go ahead and turn all this other information back on and you can see how you can quickly filter data. So you can go across each of these items in the top, any of these blue items with the drop down and you can turn off sections to get uh, maybe you just want your turbo jet time. So again just clear the X's uh, deselect the items you don't want to have viewed and here is our uh, data filtered instantly to show only turbojet. Now like I said we can uh, we can filter but we can also drag and drop because this is a pivot table so I'm going to drop the year I want my time breakdowns by year 
So let's scroll and let's see what year this data is for. This is 1976. So let's go all the way to the right and we can look at breakdowns by year. Okay, and we can also turn off years if you want to uh, minimize the data. Uh, maybe you only want to see the last five years, just turn off your prior years and you can get a quick look back. Of, uh, so that the total is in the far right. And then here's our 2011 data. And again, you can get breakdowns for those individual years by end number, by type, etc. Again, this is a pivot table, meaning you can pivot these fields to different areas to get different breakdowns. All right, so let's see here. Let's uh, take a look at one other thing, which is called the master filter. I'm going to run this again just to reset our layout for the next demo. Okay. Now, if you can see up here on the toolbar, we have something called a master filter. What this is going to allow us to do is filter uh, the flight records from our flight log where the selected field has a value logged in it. So if I set a master filter of pilot and command, we are going to tell the analyzer to instantly filter my flight log to only look at records in my flight log where pilot and command is greater than zero. All right, the filter is complete. So now, if I want to look at night pilot and command or pilot and command cross country, etc., all I have to do is look at this night column. So my total night pilot and command is 409.1. Let's turn off the master filter, select all data, and my total night is 430.2 in this example. All right. So if you're looking want to look at instrument cross country, set a master filter of cross country. This is going to tell the analyzer to only look at records in my flight log where cross country is greater than 0. In other words, I have a value for cross country. So now that I've done that, I can look at my instrument time logged where I also logged cross country. I have 105.0 cross country cross country instrument hours. I have 240 cross country night hours. All right. So hopefully you can see that this master filter, and again, I just want you to, whenever you set this master filter, just tell yourself, I am filtering my flight log to only show values where the selected item hasn't has a log entry greater than zero. So when I look at my instructor. If I set a master filter of instructor, I am telling it to only look at the rows in my flight log where instructor has been logged, in other words, greater than zero. So now I can look at my instructor night time, my instructor instrument time. And again, you always get the breakdowns by aircraft, expand by end number, go to the bottom for totals, or click the percentage for percents. Now there's a lot more functionality in the analyzer. Uh, one other one is called um, uh, the adjusted totals or uh, presets for um, airline pilots. You can see on the far right is an adjusted hours. Now here is here is a toolbar that has popped up that is a preset again just dummy uh, dummy data. But uh, say you're going to go fly for Acme Airlines or you're going to apply to Acme Airlines and Acme Airlines is saying that you can. Um, compensate your military flying by 0 0.3 per flight. So all you have to do is uh, create a preset. Um, so let's look at our NC Airlines preset. Pick out the aircraft types that apply. So what are your military types in this example? And then set the offset 0 0.3 and then when you go to the right you'll see the adjusted hours so if it was 0, 0.0 it would be 15.5 but if it was 0 0.3 well, let's go ahead and set uh, let's just do uh, an example for you 7 oh, let's do a 0 0.3 alright so look at it's 15.5 right now with the 0 offset Now let's look at it with the 0 0.3 offset. You can see that the hours increase 0 0.3 per flight 
So that can come in handy for those uh, doing any type of compensation for the type of flying you're doing at uh, the particular airline. So again, not to get too long with this video presentation, I just want you to be aware of the analyzer that is, is a gold mine of data in Logbook Pro. Let me turn off the presets. And you can pivot data, you can filter data by, by any of these items across the top. Uh, you can drag, you know, if you want to look at by quarter, by month, turn off years. You can come in here and, and really manipulate this information as much as you need to present the data that you're looking for, you know, by year, by quarter, uh, et cetera. And you can turn off the aircraft. Again, wherever you see a drop down means it, it is a filter. So again, take a little bit of time and take a look at some powerful tools within Logic Pro. One of the most powerful is the analyzer. Again, just click View Analyzer or press F11 or press the button just to the right of the logbook button on the toolbar to launch the analyzer and uh, hopefully that'll help you out with uh, any type of insurance forms, applications, etc. you're filling out. Have a good day. Hello everybody, it's December 2011 and we're going to take a look at Logbook Pro 1.12.0 and the new feature called backup encryption, the ability to set a password to protect your backups. A backup is a compressed archive of your Logbook Pro data file, contains all your information, customizations, etc. Now a backup, again ending in .bak, can be restored by anybody using Logbook Pro. You can set a password on your data file, which will protect access to your data file, but you can also set a password to your backup that prevents anybody from restoring your backup should you elect not to use a password on the data file itself. Let's take a look at how to create a backup and set a password using the new functionality in Logbook Pro 1.12.0. We're going to click File, Backup to File. You can answer yes when prompting the backup. Now the default location for backups is in your My Documents, My Logbook Profiles V1 Backup folder. Now you can change this location in the Save In if you want to put it in a folder that's being backed up by other systems or you want to uh, put it on a different hard drive or a uh, network share, wherever, you can change the location. But this is the default recommended by Logbook Pro. You can also see when creating backups, you're going to get the uh, file name and then it's going to append the date. And now it's recommended that you create multiple backups. Do not overwrite prior backups. You want to keep a history of backups. So tomorrow or next week when you create a backup, then uh, it could say 29, um, and you want to uh, just continue to create new backup files, not overriding old ones. Let's go ahead and click the backup option to start the process. And you'll be pre presented with an encrypt dialog where you can set a password. Now just take a moment here and read the information. It says enter a password to protect the backup. Passwords must be at least six characters. And the most important thing here is that passwords are case sensitive. So if you had lowercase c, a, s, e, that's going to be a different password than capital C, little a, capital S, little e. So make sure that you uh, use a password that you will remember or note it in a safe location, whichever works for you. But there's nothing we can do to help you restore a backup that you password protected. And uh, you should not share a password with anybody. Now, if the hide password is checked, you're not going to see it, as you can see. So therefore, you would have to re-enter it to validate it. Now, if you want to see it in plain text, you can uncheck the hide password option, and then there's no reason to enter a validation. So if there's nobody looking over your shoulder, you can uncheck hide the password. You can make sure you enter it properly, and then go ahead and click OK. And at this time, you can see the progress bar in the lower left of the window. This is going to uh, create the compressed archive of your entire data file and options, customizations, etc. And then you'd be presented with a dialog that shows you exactly where your, your backup has been saved. Now, maybe you need to create a backup and send it to tech support for them to help you out with a, a question you may have. You can just click Yes. And Windows Explorer will open to that location. You can then choose copy um, or uh, attach it to an email uh, to support at nc-software.com, etc. 
and uh, it's that simple. Now let's take a look at restoring a backup that has a password. File, restore back file. That's the file we just created in the backup process. And there's the file we just created. Now remember we have a password assigned to this. Therefore you're going to be prompted to enter a password. Now if you don't uh, know the password or you know somebody else is trying to restore your backup, etc., they're not going to be able to access this. It has a strong encryption uh, set on the file. So let's go ahead and enter our password. And then you get the option of where you want to um, save the file. For most users, the default working folder. Now, if you have the Enterprise Edition, you work with multiple um, um, files as we do, then we might want to set a custom area, or a custom folder, so a custom location where the backup will be restored. So again, just to review, we have encryption now available in uh, 1.12.0, protecting your backups. You can either click backup to file or backup to cloud. You'll first be presented with the uh, option to set a password. <clears throat> and we're just going to make a new backup here. And I'm going to show you quickly how to get uh, beyond this. Leave it blank or click cancel if you do not want to set a password. So we'll just click cancel. The back, and that's cancel as far as setting a password, but the backup will still be created, just not with a password for protection. And then you get the same dialogues as before. So strongly recommended to protect your information. Um, you can set a password prior to submitting backups to the cloud. And again, if you're interested in uh, our cloud backup, which allows you to create Logbook Pro PC Edition backups and save in the cloud on our servers in our backup routines, which occur multiple times a day, etc., uh, visit logbookpro.com forward slash cloud backup. You can choose a 1, 5, or 10 file option, which is the number of backups you can have saved in the cloud at any given time. Very affordable, only $19.99 for an entire year. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned about our new backup encryption. Have a great day.